This will be an exercise in parametric modeling in Revit. We're going to be creating this pavilion by modeling a single parametric modular element that we can adapt to many different projects. Then I will show you how to place it in a project and also we're going to be creating a custom material that's going to give us best results for the frame and fabric. But first we need to understand the geometrical basis for this, so for that let's go to class. And here we are in the classroom, so let's talk about the structure of this panel. So here this is the layout that we're going to get with the family template for this panel and we're going to get basically four points connected by reference lines and then what we need to do is we need to host additional points on top of those points, so we're going to be adding four of those above each one, just like this. Once we have those points in place, the next step is going to be to connect those with another set of reference lines, just like that. Now, once we have all of this, we need to connect the bottom and top points like this. And once we have that, we can then generate the structure or add some sort of geometry on this structure. Once that is completed, then we have to add additional points on the inside. So here we're going to add points on top of these two and then on the bottom of these two. And those additional points will then be connected by additional reference lines, which will then form the canvas structure. So this is going to be that canvas on top of our panel. And this is how the whole family comes together. On BalkanArchitect.com you can find a full course on advanced massing in Revit and another course on adaptive components in Revit which unleashes even more potential. The link to all courses will be up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. If you have a project and need help with modeling something specific, we now offer one-on-one -on -one consulting and the link for that will be also up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. Now, without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit, as you can see I'm at the home page. So now let's start building our panel as a family, so this will be a new family. For the family template you want to search for generic model pattern based and then hit open. Here you can select the pattern first and then adjust the spacing, horizontal and vertical, and I'm going to adjust both of these to 2000 millimeters and then hit apply. Now let's zoom in on this and now I'm going to start adding some points. So for each of these points we want to add an additional point offset on top. So what you want to do is you want to select a point element, then you want to set a work plane, so click here on set work plane and I'm going to select the horizontal work plane of this point. Then you want to make sure that here draw on work plane is selected and then you're going to place that point on top of the existing point. Hit the escape key a couple of times and then you just want to select that point, pull it up a bit and then here in the offset uh, I'm just going to create a new offset parameter. So let's click here, click on new parameter and let's call this one Z offset. I'm just going to paste this in and we can have it as an instance parameter. Click OK, OK again and now you can go over here into family types and here you can set this to 500. Hit apply. OK. And now we're just going to be repeating this whole process for the rest of the points and we can just assign the parameter that we have just created. Now these points at the bottom are connected with reference lines and we want to do the same thing for the points here on top. So what you want to do is you want to select a point, hold the control key, select another one and then we connect it by using spline through points. Now it's going to connect them, however this is a regular line and not a reference line. So let's go to the properties and then check on is reference line and hit apply. Now it's green indicating that this is a reference line. Now we're just going to be repeating this process for the rest of these. And we're going to be repeating the same process to connect the bottom dots with the upper dots. Now we have the actual frame, but it's time to turn this into actual geometry. For that, we need to have profiles, which we're going to be sweeping across these lines. To place a profile, we need a point for a reference plane. So you just want to go here to point element, 
make sure to set it on draw on face. And then we want to put one here on top, one on bottom, and one on each of these vertical elements, just like that. Hit the escape key a couple of times. Now we're going to be creating a profile on each of these. So for that, let's go to set work plane. And then I'm going to pick this vertical plane of this point, which is on the line. Then let's go to rectangle, make sure that the draw on work plane is selected. You want to start from this point and then just expand it like this. Now I'm just going to zoom out a little bit to see the dimensions. This looks good. Hit the escape key a couple of times, then you want to select the individual lines. So you hover over the line, hit the tab key once to highlight and select it. And then let's set this to 50 millimeters here and set this to 50 millimeters here. Again, I use the tab key to highlight that line. Okay, so now once I have the profile and I have the lines, I can create the sweep. Now here uh, we can use this profile and sweep all the way across. So now I'm going to select the profile, hold the control key and select each one of these reference lines on top. And then we're going to click on create form, which is just going to sweep that profile all the way around. And we're going to repeat this entire process for the lines on the bottom and all of the vertical lines. Next, we need to complete this frame by using join geometry to join all of this geometry together, just like this. And now let's add the other vertical elements here. And now as you can see, this is all connected into a singular frame. Now let's hit the escape key a couple of times. Let's select all of them. I can just hover over one piece of geometry, hit the tab key once or a few times to highlight the entire frame, click to select, and now let's assign a material. So for the material, I'm also going to click here to associate family parameter and create a new parameter called frame. I'm going to keep it as a type parameter and then click OK, click OK again. And now we can move over to the canvas. So for the canvas, we want it to be attached on the inside of the frame here, obviously. So let's first set some points. I'm going to click here on point element. I'm going to use the draw on face and I'm going to place one point at this end point here and then orbit around and place another one up here on this inside intersection. Then let's do the other sides, but here I'm going to place it on the bottom. So that would be here and on the other side or the opposing side as well on the bottom, just like that. And then hit the escape key a couple of times. So we have a couple of opposing points on top and a couple of opposing points on the bottom. Now we're going to be connecting all of these points by using reference lines, just like we did initially with those original points. Now it's time to turn this into a fabric. So let's select this entire chain of lines and then click on create form. Now this might try to create an extrusion like this, but if you hit the space key, it's going to toggle to the different shape, which in this case would be a plane for our fabric, which works perfectly. So now I just have to hit enter and it's going to create that uh, geometry, a fabric geometry. This looks perfect. And now just to complete this geometry, we have to assign a material. So I'm just going to go here to material, click on associate family parameter, and then create a new parameter. This will be a type parameter called fabric. And now I can just click OK, OK again. And there we go. We have now completed all of the geometry for this family. And now we can just assign proper materials. As I said, we're going to be creating some really cool materials. So let's go here to the properties and open up family types. So here for our frame material, let's click here and then open up the material browser. Now here, I just want to search for some wood material. So it's going to open up some wood material down here in the libraries. So I'm simply going to pick out birch and then load that in, hit apply and OK. And then again, apply and OK. And let's switch this to realistic to see what this looks like. Now here, I don't like the fact that uh, the material on this side is kind of running in this direction. So I can actually uh, flip that. So if you need to rotate your material map, you can just go here to perch, click here on edit, 
and then you can open up your image by opening up this drop menu and finding edit image oops it opened up on the second screen and then here you can assign a rotation so I'm just going to go with 90 degrees over here just like that hit done and then we just want to repeat the same thing for the bump so click on edit image and then here for the bump let's add a 90 degree rotation just like that done apply and now as you can see here it's following the proper direction now let's go to fabric this is going to be a bit more complicated but the effect is going to be amazing so let's click here and open this up and here we're going to be creating a completely new material so let's click here on create new material so here we have the default new material now I want to exchange or replace this asset so let's open up the asset browser and here let's open up the appearance library then I'm going to search for fabric and here let's go with the burlap one so I'm just going to exchange that asset and now we can close this and as you can see this asset has been applied next let's go to the image itself and then here let's click on edit image so it's going to open up that image so first I want to adjust the sample size to 400 millimeters just like that and I'm also going to click on link texture transforms and click done next let's move down to bump and I'm going to make the same adjustment here by clicking on edit image and then let's try not to scroll over this because it will make some changes so be careful with that as I said this will be 400 by 400 that's perfect and then let's check link texture transforms click done and finally we want to add some cutouts so what I'm going to do is I'm here just going to click on this to get the uh, image name and then click Control C to copy cancel out of here go to cutouts check them on and here I can now go Control V to paste and it's just going to search for that image let's now click back here and here instead of bump I want to select cutouts and double click so I just use that name to can filter out and find the burlap cutouts and we just want to adjust the sample size as we did before and make sure we link it click done and now all of these images have been adjusted and we have our own custom material so now if I hit apply and OK and apply again this is the result as you can see we have that burlap kind of transparent material and it truly does look amazing finally arguably the most important part which is to go here to file and then actually save this family I'm going to save this family as parametric roof module hit save and now we're done now we actually have to use this so let's start off a new project for that I'm going to go here to the file menu go to new and this will be a new conceptual mass we have to pick out the metric mass template hit open and then here I want to first place a reference plane on which we're going to be hosting our canopy so let's go here to the south elevation zoom in a little bit go to reference plane uh, here I'm just going to place a horizontal reference plane like this hit the escape key a couple of times click to select and let's make the offset 2500 millimeters and then here for the name we're going to call this roof bottom now because I have named this reference plane now I can go into a level one and here I can go to set work plane and I can pick out that reference plane called roof bottom and then click OK now let's zoom in a little bit on that go to rectangle make sure draw on work plane is selected and then just make a rectangle hit the escape key a couple of times now here I'm just going to hover over one of the edges hit the tab key once to highlight and then click to select and let's just make this 8000 by 8000 millimeters I'm going to center it by selecting it and then just using the move tool in order to center it here on these existing reference planes now let's go back to the 3d view 
And now here I'm going to show you a problem with Revit and that's if you select a rectangle and click on create form, it's going to default to extrusion with no other option. However, if I go back one step and then if I use the tab key to highlight, click to select and then delete two of these lines and if I select only two lines and click on create form, it's going to show us this, but if I hit the space key a couple of times, it is going to give us a surface as an option. And now if I hit enter, we have a surface which we can use. The next step is to divide the surface. So you click on divide surface. And then here we have some options. So what I'm going to do is set the U grid and V grid to fixed distance and set that to 2000 millimeters, just how we have set up our parametric roof module. So now once we have the pattern set up, we can go back to our parametric roof module, go to load into project and it's going to load it in here. We can then go to the 3D view, select this pattern and then go here to properties. And here, instead of no pattern, find rectangle. And here we have our parametric roof module. When I select that, it's immediately going to apply that. And automatically we have a perfect result. As you can see, it looks beautiful. If we set it to realistic, it's going to look even better. And then we can play around with the materials later on. Uh, we can create some sort of a stand, so on and so forth. I hope you have enjoyed this. If you want to get access to this Revit project file and any of my other Revit project files, you can find all of those on my Patreon page, which I'm going to link up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.